Hey everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, this morning I want to talk to you real quick and uh, do a quick review on a gun that I love and have uh, wanted to get a hold of for a long time. It just uh, never presented itself to me. Um, hell, you know, when I was able to do it until recently. And that is the Sig Rattler. Sig Rattler is uh, part of Sig's MCX uh, line of, of rifles and pistols. Um, obviously, seven and a half inch barrel, 300 blackout. Uh, you can also find them once in a while in 223, 556. Um, not quite as prevalent, and really the rifle, or excuse me, the pistol itself is not that common to see. Uh, you can find it at certain significant dealers, um, you know, dealers that have a good inventory, a good hand, uh, getting stuff directly from SIG, that's where you're going to find these at. Uh, great little gun. Um, piston driven uh, AR platform uh, obviously no buffer tube or anything like that um, you got an ambidextrous charging handle right here so to start out with that's great it's a good upgrade they give you um, SIG has worked on the trigger a little bit from the first versions I think this trigger now in the MCX I have an MCX rifle uh, I believe the MCX triggers today are better than they were when I bought my rifle uh, five years ago. Um, I think they've, they've come a little bit, they've, they've polished them down a little bit, if you will. Uh, now on my gun, you'll see I've got a Silencer Co. Quick Connect um, ASR adapter. I have these on most all my rifles uh, and handguns if they need a suppressor. Now SIG barrels, whether no matter what you get as far as the MCXs, MPXs, uh, 400 treads, um, any of them, are going to be tapered and it's a taper locking system that SIG is uh, known for uh, that's proprietary to their cans so supplied with all SIG pistols and uh, rifles that are threaded you'll get a small metal collet goes over the end of that barrel makes the end of the barrel flush that way you can put the uh, suppressor uh, connect of your choice on here um, it's kind of nice because this you can see the silencer co Saker ASR spins on and then the collet down here just locks right on the gun. That's all this can be. Um, making it a pretty handy little package. Now you've got an adjustable gas block on this on this uh, pistol right here. It's very easy to take a round of ammo. That's 220 grain subsonic right there. Stick in here and all you gotta do is turn it. Turning the gas block changes the amount or excuse me, turning the gas block changes the amount of gas that's sent to the piston and allows the gun to cycle subsonic or, sonic, or supersonic ammunition differently. Um, I did find this gun needed some break-in and since I'm primarily going to be using it for a truck gun and hunting, uh, I'm pretty much settled on uh, Nosler Varmageddon 110 grain VMAX ammo. Uh, I like that round. It can be used on deer, uh, you know, lung shots. Uh, I've used it before, it's fine. In the smaller calibers, like a 223, 2250, you do not want to use that on deer. Um, but in the larger calibers, it works great, just like a regular ballistic tip. It just has a thinner jacket on that bullet. Um, so yeah, this is going to be primarily uh, a truck gun, uh, doe season gun. In some states, it can be used during handgun season. Uh, with the suppressor and the scope on there, it's a real handy little package. Now the scope is a Burris MTAC 1 to 4 by 24. It's illuminated. Um, it has uh, 10 brightness settings on it. Um, it's got a uh, horseshoe reticle with three dots. It's actually calibrated to 223. Doesn't really bother me much. This is 150 yard and under gun. Um, and the thing just flat shoots. Uh, I'm gonna have another video up pretty soon of a little bit of range time with the gun. Stretch it out to 100 yards, see how it goes. Um, let everybody see how it shoots and how the gun cycles. One of the greatest parts about this is as far as a truck gun goes, I can take this can off, set it in a case. The stock folds simply by taking your thumb, pulling up on this bar, pushing down on that button into a nice handy little package. This thing will fit under a seat, it'll fit in a backpack should you, know, should you want to hunt with it like that. Uh, and a lot of the uh, smaller um, hunting handgun cases you can find in the market today will fit in those. To get that stock open, you simply just pull it, 
right there. Now, all the SIG, MPX, and MCX uh, stock attachments are pick rail attachments back here. You can take out that screw. This guy just slides right off, and you can change the stock if you want to SBR it. Put the regular fixed skeleton stock on there, six fixed. Uh, there's two or three different styles of, styles of stock you can get for it. Um, that's just totally up to you. Now, at the heart of the gun, you have to remember that this is still a standard takedown AR. All right, I can push that takedown pin out back there, just like on a regular AR, the upper comes right off, all right? Just remember that this is a piston driven lower because there is no buffer tube. So if you wanna buy another piston upper to stick on here, go right ahead. You might wanna grab one in 450 Bushmaster or 6.5 Grendel, I have a 6.5 Grendel pistol, which I have friends that have built those and hunt with them and they love them. Um, but it's gotta be piston driven, so don't forget about that. Uh, again, once the package is all complete and the can's back on there, you're still looking at a very short and compact package, end to end, you're at 31 inches. You just can't beat it um, for a compact little hunting tool. Coyotes, varmints, like I said, deer should they be. Um, this PMAG goes in there and obviously it's a little big. Uh, for a lot of the guns that I hunt with that I like to take outside and, and, and carry it around, I really enjoy using 10 and 20 round PMAGs. Um, one reason is legality. Most states don't allow anything over a 10 round mag when you're hunting, no matter what you're hunting. Even down to prairie dogs. Um, and it just makes it, keeps it more compact. That's what I really like to see on here. And if you're trying to shoot the gun off the bench, obviously the 10 and 20s work much better than the 30s. Um, and, you know, side note, I've never understood why they sell boxes of 20 when all the PMAGs are 30s. So I keep it at 20 most of the time. I do have a ton of 30s, but that's just because they're around and available. Uh, another quick note about the scope. That is a worn steel 30 mil scope mount. Uh, obviously set forward for the eye relief and the height on an AR or an AR type gun. Um, yeah, the, the, the gun's great. It's handy, it's small, it's light. Uh, you can buy accessories for it. It comes to shoulder well. Everything's good here with this one power burst scope. Um, you can really, really uh, use two eyes, not worry about focusing as much. And, uh, um, you know, it, it just aids in up close shooting and kick it up to four power, stretch your legs a little bit to 100 yards or so. Um, so, again, the gun's great. And even if you did want to bring it down with the, with the uh, stock folded, you're here. You've got no recoil. You could shoot this gun from this position, it wouldn't have an issue. It wouldn't be like one of those goofy videos of people shooting Mossberg persuaders and holding that pistol grip up here and it sells in the head. This gun's ultra controllable ultra controllable with one hand. You could even use the scope with one hand like this. It's not a big deal. Um, these things are great. The 300 blackout round has its purpose. Uh, I once read that Elmer Keith's favorite load, if you don't know who Elmer Keith is, look him up. Uh, Elmer Keith's favorite load was a camp stove, 2200 feet a second, meaning like a 4570, 458 wind mag, any of the larger for caliber uh, bullets behind slow, heavy charges of uh, black powder back in the day. Um, the thing about the 300 blackouts, it's kind of like that. Um, the 300 blackout lobs 110 grain bullets around 22, 2300 feet a second. Um, and it's not a lot of uh, umph. A lot of people call it a 30 30 class cartridge. I call it the 300 blackout. I call it 30 30 to 30 30. You can kind of equate them, but they don't come loaded with the same bullets. They're not the same case. They're not the same guns. So, yeah, you can compare them a little bit. Um, I would stretch a 30-30 out to 300 yards if I'd shot it with, say, Lever Evolution ammo or some of the good hand loads out there. Uh, I would never stretch this gun out to 300 yards. I've had bolt guns at 300 blackout. I still wouldn't do that either. They just don't have the, uh, they don't have the legs. They, they, they're just not, not good enough. And I'm talking for hunting purposes because I mainly hunt. Uh, I'm, not just, I'm not a real recreational shooter. I'm not a competitive shooter. I go out and shoot a lot, but uh, it's all in preparation for hunting. So anyways, uh, SIG, MCX Rattler, awesome gun. I got this gun from the Gun Grove in Macon, Missouri. 
Uh, the gun group's an awesome place. Uh, Ian and Chelsea Rice are the owners. Uh, they have got one of the biggest selections of SIG guns uh, in Missouri. They have, uh, they have and have access to all kinds of great stuff. Their website is www.gungrove.com. That's G -U -N -G -R -O -V -E .com. Uh, You can look at their, their uh, inventory is pretty much updated every other day uh, on that website. They get some great stuff in and they will always uh, you know, treat you like family. If they've got ammunition, there's no warranty, or excuse me, there's no limits, there's no uh, cap on what you can buy. They're there to serve their customers and keep their customers. So uh, check them out, give them a shout. They ship, they have a gun broker account. So uh, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section and I will be shooting this very, very soon. Thanks for watching.